There are things he couldn't say on TV. Hear Vince off script on News Talk 1110 WBT. All right, we're going to delve into an odd one now here at News Talk 1110 WBT. And I don't want you to just think of this as something that's okay. This is some little local issue in a town nearby. I want you to think big picture because this relates to a broader issue, at least the allegations here, that, frankly, we've been talking about here and the level of responsiveness to people and whether there's a level of transparency and honesty. Um, those questions are being raised anyway, which is the reason why we're bringing this up on this program. And it relates to a situation developing in Indian Trail. Now, um, to kind of put a spotlight on this, we have with us Mike Falkenberry to talk with us about a concern that he has, and apparently a number of other citizens in Indian Trail have, about the possibility that some, some illegal meetings are taking place among members of the town council. And uh, we'll just welcome aboard uh, Mike Falkenberry to the program right now. Welcome, sir. Hey, Vince. How are you doing this afternoon? Hey, doing well, doing well. If you can, uh, how would you sum up your concerns about what's taking place there in the town? Uh, I think there's a uh, corruption and dishonesty amongst uh, town council and Indian Trail at this point. And this kind of come, came to a head, and you can correct me if I misunderstand this, that uh, there was a concern about meetings that were taking place that were essentially illegal meetings. These were not publicized. These were uh, uh, these were quorums that were actually assembled together, possibly dealing with talking about town business. And uh, as I understand it, someone uh, basically was stalking one of these homes to verify this was taking place. And uh, this person's actually charged with misdemeanor secret peeping. But as I understand it, the purpose of this was to verify whether an illegal meeting was taking place. Am I understanding this correctly? That is correct. That is correct. And what was the result of the, this uh, reconnaissance effort? Did they discover that uh, there was a quorum of members there? Well, while I was watching the WSOC TV report uh, a few weeks ago, you know, it was on the report that any show council members were tracking down an alleged peeper. So in that report, uh, one of the town council members, uh, Ms. Darlene Luther, was at a home with other council members and political candidates when she spotted an alleged peeping Tom. Now, there's two questions. Whose house were they at, and who are the town council members, and why did they not want to go public with the story? So the other thing I came across was uh, also Miss Luther declined an interview but was posting updates on her Facebook page. Well, that got me uh, curious again. So I accessed her Facebook page, and on it, Miss Luther states that we, meaning she and Mr. Allen, which is another town council member at the house at the time, went out hunting for the peeping Tom the next evening and found him. So the question is, why didn't law enforcement get involved? Why are they taking it upon themselves to chase this peeping Tom down themselves? Now, after that, uh, an email was published in the Inquirer Journal, which confirmed my suspicions. Uh, in that email, uh, why didn't Miss Luther call 911 immediately when Mr. Stasco, the alleged peeping Tom, first looked into the house? Next, why didn't she call 911 while they're in pursuit of the suspect? And so they're putting their lives in jeopardy. And also, too, why did she wait until she arrived home to call 911 and call to warn the others of possible danger? I what possible danger? The peeping Tom's already left the residence. They're already pursuing him down the highway. And then also, too, how did she know if Mr. Stasco was working alone and did not have a gun in his car or had some other people helping him out? So the, that sparked some more curiosity. Uh, so when I did, I have a, a relative who uh, has a background in law enforcement. He directed me as to where to access some information. So I was able to come across a warrant for the arrest for Mr. Stasco. On that warrant, list names at that residence during that meeting, supposedly, allegedly, meeting. And on that list, lists Mr. Roger Stanton, who's a town council member, also Mr. Arlie Luther, and Mr. Robert Allen. Well, that's three council members in the same room, according to the document. They were in the sunroom at the rear of the residence. It is on the document. It's proven fact statement taken by a uh, law enforcement officer. So on that warrant, it also lists Severin and Nancy Jacobson, which is also involved with the PAC, or the Indian Trail Citizens for Progress, which is a political organization. Now, 
Now, the key is that they did have an illegal meeting. If referendums were discussed, well, that's on the ballot, and that is town business. That should be considered illegal and be thrown out. So are you able to verify whether they were discussing town business? That's just it. See, it's all secret. Only the people in that room will ever know that. Okay. And uh, let me just call, and I just want to put the word out now that we want to talk to members of the town council. You're welcome to come on this program. I want to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. If you believe you've been stalked, you some crime has been committed against you, or you believe somehow this has been mis- misrepresented, I'd love to hear about it, and we'll give you a forum right here. Otherwise, I think there are some lingering questions, because this has been going on for quite some time, as I understand it. Uh, Mike Falkenberry, stay with us. Uh, we've got a break here, but we'll continue uh, with this conversation. And we'll also take calls on the 704-570-1110 on News Talk 1110 WBT. This hour is brought to you by Diamonds Direct South Park. Get her a bigger, better quality diamond for less. Exquisite diamonds straight from the diamond cutters. No middleman, superior quality, unbeatable selection. Diamonds Direct, the Carolina's direct diamond importer on Sherwin Road. WBT Time Saver Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Matthews Fun Machines. All lanes now open. I-85 northbound near mile marker 52. Earlier incident has been cleared or at least pulled to the right shoulder. All lanes now open. I-85 northbound between Bruton Smith Boulevard, exit 49 and Poplar Tent Road, exit 52. Have a collision reported 77 northbound near mile marker 20. That's 77 northbound between I-485 exit 19 and Gilead Road, exit 23. And uptown Charlotte, westbound Brookshire Freeway near Graham Street to the north on Graham Street near I-85, University City Boulevard near Pavilion Boulevard. BB&T. In a changing financial landscape, BB&T is proud of their roots in North Carolina where they supported the financial growth of clients for 139 years. BB&T. Sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Member FDIC. 64 degrees tonight clear with a low 34. Tomorrow sunshine with a high 63. Boomer Von Cannon, WBT. Time saver traffic and weather together every 10 minutes. Next update at 520. Now back to Vince Coakley. And our conversation with Mike Falkenberry, uh, providing some insight on what's going on with Indian Trail. Before we go back to him, I want to tell you about some breaking news going on that we're going to pick up on in just a few minutes. There is a lawyer who represents one of these women who've made allegations against Herman Cain. She now wants to be released from her confidentiality agreements so she can tell, quote, her side of the story. And as you might expect, CNN especially is all over this and they're having a blast. So we're going to talk about this in just a few minutes. So stay with us as we uh, delve back into this in just a short bit of time here. First, I want to wrap up this discussion about what's going on with uh, Indian Trail. There was another item you wanted to mention about uh, this incident that happened recently, right, Mike Falkenberry? Yes. And I should mention we only have about a couple of minutes left in this segment. Uh, Tell us what that second item is you were going to go into. Well, tonight there's supposed to be a special meeting called upon for the town council of Indian Trail at 7 p.m. tonight at the uh, town meeting facility regarding ethics review. Now, I believe, uh, if I'm correct, so far um, many of the town council members have chosen not to attend this meeting. Now, if they are supposed to be serving the public in the public's best interest, my question is why will they, they not attend this meeting? Now, who called the meeting? Uh, the mayor uh, called the meeting. Okay. In reference to all this hitting the media. Now, was the me- was the mayor at this house? Uh, no, sir, he was not. Okay. And, and the mayor is not running for re-election, so he has nothing to try to uh, prove to anyone. He's just uh, trying to make what's, you know, what should be put out in public and uh, allow the town council members to have a chance to uh, give their side of the story. Uh, but evidently they don't want to show up to this meeting uh, on behalf of the residents of Indian Trail. Now, we just have uh, about a minute left in this segment, but I'm going to ask you if you could sum up what you're concerned about and what you want to see as a resolution, what would that be? The question is how do we uh, go to the state level with this uh, situation, and I'm sure there's others, to have somebody to look into this, investigate it thoroughly, and what our next step can be to get the government back to the people instead of having this nonsense going on. At this point, we have a five-person dictatorship running the town of Indian Trail. There is no way for the citizens or residents to step up to oversee if ethics are being broken. And when
when they are broken, we ask for the resonations and they refuse to do so. They have this high horse mentality that they cannot be touched, and that has to change. And I beg anyone out there who has any knowledge of knowing how to proceed with this, please contact us. Let us know because we are tired of this same song and dance. It has to be a change, and a change now before it's too late. Well, Mike Falkenberry, thanks a lot uh, for joining us and talking about the situation in Indian Trail. And he did mention a meeting tonight at 7 p.m. This is a special meeting about ethics, a review of ethics. And uh, do let us know uh, what develops with that meeting tonight, sir. Uh, we appreciate your, uh, your input on this. And if you are one of the town council members, if you were present at that meeting, we would love to talk with you. In fact, we're hearing that... Um, a representative from the town is with us, and uh, we're going to continue a conversation on this right here on News Talk 1110 WBT right now, 15 minutes after 5 o'clock. Let's go to the newsroom with Jim Barrow. Two big banks are backing off on new fees for basic checking accounts. Bank of America is dropping its plan to charge customers $5 a month for making debit card purchases. Separately, Chase is ending a test of a $15 monthly fee for basic checking accounts. CBSMoneyWatch.com's Kathy Kristoff says B of A got the message from their customers who said the debit card fee went too far. Consumers have put up and put up and put up and put up and have gotten increasingly angry, and this $5 fee was just the straw that broke the camel's back. The bank says the move is in response to consumer feedback. Consumer advocate Ed Mirzwinski of U.S. Perg says the fee clearly rankled consumers. I didn't expect Bank of America to completely drop it. I thought they'd go down to $3, $2, or $1 first, but they finally read the writing on the wall. The about face by the banking industry comes amid growing public anger over higher bank fees. A movement to get bank customers switched to credit unions started by a Bank of America customer had marked this Saturday as Bank Transfer Day. More on this and other top stories all afternoon here on News Talk 1110 W. UBT. Thanks very much, Jim Barrow, as we continue our conversation about the events in Indian Trail. And we have with us now uh, the mayor of Indian Trail, John Quinn. And uh, he has been listening in on this conversation we've had with Mike Falkenberry. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Vince. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, this is uh, something I understand has been brewing for quite some time. We've been getting emails, calls about this for quite a while. Uh, you've called because you uh, wanted to weigh in on this in some way. What do you want to communicate to us? Well, I think, I think you, uh, Michael, pretty well summed it up. I, I, first of all, I appreciate people like Michael Falkenberry that have taken notice as to what is uh, happening in a uh, small town. And I think your comments early on in the show that it is not, this is just not restricted to small town Indian Trail. This, I believe, is pervasive among, uh, in this nation. Uh, I think uh, ethics have been vacated. I think uh, principles, our founding principles of honesty and uh, openness have been uh, lost for the most part. And uh, as a result, we're getting bad government. Uh, I've, I've highlighted things from the time I came into office. Uh, I ran because I saw things that I was hoping to see changed, and uh, apparently they saw me coming. And it's been a, it's been a battle the four years that I've been in here. And uh, I want you to know that I've been uh, actually reading and uh, reviewing some of the things for quite some time about what's been going on there. I hadn't had the context to be able to go into this now, and it's certainly all blown out in public now. Now, if I understand correctly, you are not running for office again. Is that correct? I'm not. I I, uh, I always saw myself uh, as as kind of like a if you want to, uh, the Marines. May, or, you know, not that I've ever been a Marine, but the Marines go in and they take trying to establish a beachhead, and then uh, hopefully uh, that's what I've been trying to do is to ab establish some sort of uh, a beachhead of of good practices and advocating for proper government uh, policies. And then hopefully people would take notice and, and carry on. Uh, it's uh, I've done my four years, but uh, again I'm, I'm I'm happy that that folks like Michael Falkenberry who uh, who really want to kind of take it on and and uh, not let this thing die. Uh, if we don't do something about local government, if we don't do something where we live, uh, government will run amok. And I think we're going to see more and more tyranny, more and more loss of our freedoms. And uh, we don't know where it's going to go. And, now, I, I want to ask you here, because uh, we, we'll probably uh, carry this over a little bit longer, but I want to ask you, uh, do you have any awareness about this meeting that took place the other day? Uh, were you there? Did you know who was there? Do you know what was discussed in that meeting? No, I first found out about the meeting, Vince, when I, when I, I was on vacation. We were up in West Virginia, and uh, several days after the email that uh, Councilwoman Luther sent out, 
alleging that there was a stalker and, and, and not knowing who it was, and, and uh, there was even some innuendo that she thought maybe some people had put this man up to it. Um, I, I made a couple of phone calls and said, what is going on? And uh, in reading that, um, I, 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 I had a lot of questions, as, as other people did. Uh, why would they not just call 911? If I see somebody in my backyard peering in the window, I'm calling the cops. Uh, but instead, they they pursued him, and it became clear to me, at least in, this is my opinion, that they wanted to know what this guy had seen and whether he, he would he had got evidence that they were meeting illegally. I mean, there was no reason to do anything if you're not doing anything wrong, other than call the cops. But uh, so I had some questions about it, and. Uh, one 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 clarification. I I'm unaware that this uh, peeping Tom was affiliated with anybody. He apparently was just a hapless guy who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, or maybe in the right place. And it was you know just coincidence that this guy happened to be there. And uh, he he was apparently had a previous record of uh, peeping years ago, and uh, so that was enough for, I guess on the basis to arrest him. So uh, to, to make sure, we want to pick this up here. Uh, I've got more questions for you, but we've got to take a break. Stay on with us, uh, Mayor John Quinn of Indian Trail, News Talk 1110 WBT. WBT, time saver traffic and weather together, brought to you by Matthews Fun Machines. Have report of a collision, I-77 northbound near mile marker 20. That's between I-485 exit 19 and Gilead Road exit 23. With the traffic cameras, we're detecting heavy traffic on 77 northbound, beginning at Harris Boulevard exit 18. You may want to consider US-21 or NC Highway 115 as your alternate. Have a collision just west of Uptown on Freedom Drive near Moorhead Street to the north on Graham Street near I-85 and University City Boulevard near Pavilion Boulevard. Thinking diamond jewelry for the holidays? Think diamonds direct South Park, because nobody has the selection, the quality, or the value you get from the Carolinas Direct Diamond Importer. Diamonds direct South Park, Sharon Road, across the street from South Park Mall. 64 degrees tonight, clear with a low 34. Tomorrow, sunshine with a high 63. Boomer Von Cannon, WBT, Time Saver Traffic and Weather together every 10 minutes. Next update at 530. Now back to Vince Coakley. And our conversation about the situation in Indian Trail, some concerns about the possibility of illegal meetings taking place. And we're talking with uh, Mayor John Quinn of Indian Trail. Uh, and I wanted to pick up on this issue of what was taking place before. So and, and to make sure I understand this correctly, this peeping Tom is a, for lack of a better way to put it, a legitimate peeping Tom, had nothing to do, was not sent there uh, for any surveillance or anything that you're aware of. That's my understanding. Uh, he just happened to be in the neighborhood doing what uh, peeping toms do, and uh, uh, apparently Miss Luther uh, noticed him out there, and um, they apparently believed that he was was there for some other reason uh, than just peeping. And, and that's where all this came, the bizarre aspect of this whole thing, as that uh, this hapless guy may have stumbled onto something, and then here it is, you know. Yeah, I, I would like to just put out word here for all of those who are in that meeting. Uh, I would love to hear from you. And uh, I, I will mention names here. The council members Darlene Luther, Robert Allen, Roger Stanton, as I understand it, were on the, uh, are mentioned in this warrant. Um, I, I'd like to hear as well from Nancy and uh, Severin Jacobson. This was their home. I'd love to hear the, your account of what took place here and if... There's some misunderstanding here about what was going on. Uh, we'd love to be able to clarify that on this program. The opportunity is here. Uh, we just have uh, about 30 seconds left in this segment. Uh, I want to ask you whether you've appealed to any outside law enforcement agency or investigative bureau uh, to delve into this. Not this particular instance, uh, Vince, but um, I have done some research on other issues, uh, secreting of documents, refusing to allow me as an elected official to view uh, documents which would either uh, confirm or, or, or uh, deny any, something that I have been looking into. Uh, we had hundreds of thousands of dollars missing uh, uh, several years back, and I was told it was embezzlement and nothing ever happened to it. I've talked to the highest said levels hundreds of, of thousands of dollars? Yeah. And there's been no investigation outside of the Not. town. This Not. this is absolutely crazy, and uh, this has to be pursued. Um, stay with us. Uh, we'll continue more on this conversation. News Talk 1110 WBT. It's 524. <laughs> 
We're back on News Talk 1110 WBT talking about the situation in Indian Trail and we want to wrap this up because we want to get to the uh, developing news on Herman Cain. Uh, I, I want to wrap up here with a question uh, for you. I actually want to give you the opportunity to talk with someone who's called in. Uh, Rick is on the line to talk with you, Mayor Quinn. Uh, go ahead, Rick. Hello, Rick. Yeah, can you hear me? I hear you, sir. Okay, yeah, I'm a state licensed private investigator, Rick Mullinax. I'm out of Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, if y'all would uh, pick up somebody like us to do an investigation, once we put our forms and and everything together to get what we need, and then we could get, take it to the district attorney, and if they didn't do anything with it, then we can always go to the attorney general's office in Raleigh. But once we do an investigation, it's pretty much court-approved evidence. That may be one avenue y'all might want to look at because they can interfere with us once we start an investigation. Uh, so I was just wanting to add that to the comments, especially when you said a bunch of money, $100,000 or so, was missing. Yeah, thank you, sir. I, I don't know that, I mean, I don't know who would pay you. Uh, I, and uh, if, you're, if you're looking to do the right thing, if you want to contact me uh, at the uh, town website on, the, uh, on my email, feel free. I'd be happy to hear from you, and I can, I'd be happy to correspond with you. Oh, yeah, well, I'll do that, and uh, if it's okay, I can give you my website. If you need to look, I'll probably let me on the radio. Well, we'll, we'll uh, let you contact him uh, through the website, uh, Rick. And uh, Mayor Quinn, we'll let you go from here, but do keep us posted on how things develop. And, again, I put this out. All of you members of the uh, town council and Indian Trail, we want to hear from you. Tell us what's going on out there. We want to give you your opportunity to, um, to set the record straight, whatever is going on here. Well, I've given them that opportunity tonight at 7 o'clock. I've asked uh, them to come and, and uh, justify some of their, their actions and document uh, some of their evidences uh, that they've, uh, for what they've done. And uh, apparently right now we're not going to have a quorum, but um, we'll see. And I hope others come out. Maybe we can have a little discussion. Okay. Well, let us know what develops there. Uh, thanks a lot, Mayor Quinn, John Thank Quinn you. of Indian Trail. And uh, we'll continue to follow what develops in this situation. And we'll take uh, one more quick call on this subject before we move on from Frank. And, um, Frank, what do you have to say on this? I was just curious if he, if he was what they call a weak mayor or a strong mayor. A strong mayor would mean he's the, he's the chief executive of that city, and he'd, he'd probably have a little more, bit more uh, more leverage on some of these issues. If, he, if it's a council manager form of government, then, then the, the, the head power usually rests with the city manager. But I'm in South Carolina, so some of these may not apply, but you might want to look into the, if you have a state ethics commission. They're fairly narrow what they'll investigate, but you can look it up, I'm sure, online. You may want to, while he's still the mayor, he may have, have uh, this is mostly from South Carolina, but I'm sure North Carolina has, where he could seek an opinion from the attorney general. That's a pretty good service that we have down in South Carolina. Now, it's not binding, but they will they will give you a legal opinion as to what's going on there, if it's legal or not, at no cost. Uh, that sounds city. good. That's, that's definitely a good uh, avenue to explore. Uh, thanks a lot for your call, Frank. And we'll continue to follow the developments out in Indian Trail to see uh, what happens there, because obviously uh, I'm, I'm definitely of the belief that where there's smoke, there's probably a fire. So let's find out for sure before we move on. And uh, it related to that, speaking of smoke and fires, there's a new development I need to tell you about in regard to this Herman Cain situation and these accusers, at least one of them, is now wanting to be released from the confidentiality agreement. Here's what the Washington Post is now reporting. One of the women who accused GOP presidential candidate Herman Cain of sexual harassment wants to tell her side of the story but is barred by a confidentiality agreement, according to her attorney in Washington. Lawyer Joel Bennett called on the National Restaurant Association, where the woman in Kane worked in the late 1990s, to release the woman from her written promise not to talk about the allegations or disparage the trade group. It is frustrating that Herman Kane is going around bad-mouthing the two complainants, and my client is blocked by a confidentiality agreement, Bennett said. The National Restaurant Association ought to release them, allow them to respond. The association, which Kane headed from 1996 to 99, has remained mum since the story broke in Politico Sunday evening, citing a long-standing policy not to comment on personnel issues. Now, Kane denied the sexual harassment allegations, saying they were totally baseless and totally false. Bennett represents one of the two women who attended an Ivy League school and now works for the federal government. What a surprise. She's avoided the limelight since the allegations were aired. And she's staying with relatives while the media stakes out her home in suburban Maryland. 
If she's released from the confidentiality ban, then this is a whole new ball game, according to Bennett. If we didn't have a written settlement agreement that says confidential and no disparagement, I think she'd be very comfortable coming forward. The attorney told the Post on Tuesday, not because she would so hellbent on doing something to Herman Cain. I don't know that. For all practical purposes, Herman Cain has already done that, waived confidentiality, according to Bennett, but legally that might not constitute a waiver. Because the case is more than a dozen years old, Bennett said he no longer has the file nor the confidentiality agreement. He said the client sending it to him to review to determine how she might speak publicly. Bennett, who's practiced employment law for four decades since graduating from Georgetown University, said he disagrees with Kane's statements that the settlement agreement with his client was for severance only. If there had been sexual harassment claims, there would not have been a settlement, according to Bennett. Over the weekend, as the story was breaking, Bennett said his client called him. At the time, he said he had not even remembered the name of the association official who his client had accused. He said doesn't remember going to the association offices and thinks the matter might have been handled over phone and fax and quite expeditiously. Calls to the Restaurant Association and the Kane campaign were not returned so far. So that's the update. This update just came in minutes ago. And we'll keep you posted. Want to get your calls on this as to what you think may come out of this, if anything. The phone number is 704-570-1110. It's 540. Dick Scopely. News Talk 1110 WBT. It's 546. Um, we'll have a news update coming up here in a few minutes. But we have with us now Darlene Luther, a city councilwoman from Indian Trail, to uh, basically follow up from our conversation a few minutes ago. Uh, welcome aboard, ma'am. Hi, thank you. Uh, you called, obviously, to uh, to respond to some of the conversation earlier. Uh, what would you like to say? Right. Uh, well, basically, what I would like to say is, in the town of Indian Trail with Mayor John Quinn, everything gets so convoluted that the reason why you don't hear a lot from any of the council people is that you really don't know where to begin to even address all of the conspiracies that he says are supposedly going on for the past four years. I've been on the council for two years, and anybody that's familiar with Indian Trail knows that it's one supposed conspiracy after another. It started with the prior town manager um, and the prior town attorney and the prior council um, went on to the interim town manager. She was in conspiracies. Um, included in it now also is Joe Fivis, the current town manager. He's in a conspiracy, as is the town attorney with us, as is the staff who had been instructed to lie uh, at the direction of the town manager, at the direction of the town council. I mean, it is absolutely exasperating and endless. Everybody knows that uh, the recent conspiracies were the ABC store. The ABC store was illegal. The ABC board was corrupt. Um, there was a heated discussion with the ABC board at the council a few months ago when really we have an upstanding, spectacular ABC board. I mean, it is the never ending conspiracy that has been going on supposedly within Indian Trail for four long years, crossing dozens of people. Now, what you have here today is called seven days prior to an election. This is a very, very convenient as in any, as is everything else. Today, just as an example, I got a phone call that Jonathan Baer, who is a close cohort of John Quinn, um, is going door to door in Brandon Oaks seven days before an election, talking about how the town council has embezzled $400,000 and so on and so forth, and all these crazy conspiracies where they lead you to websites that are actually personal websites where they write the stories or take clips or edit videos and so on and so forth. I mean, it's absolutely, like I said, you don't even know where to begin to address right. it. Before you, before you continue on, but I do want to ask you a question here. Sure. Are you saying this all centers around one person being the mayor? You know, I'm going to say it right straight out, yes. And if you ask anybody at Town Hall, they'll say yes. Um, if you look at all of the emails, if I was to, which they are public record, open up the email system. John Quinn's emails to and from the council for the past four years, it will tell its own story, and you won't even be needing to talk to me right now. If, it if, is laden with conspiracy. Now, laden. When, I, when, I, when, I, when I raise this question, because if this is a uh, – because I, this is part of what puzzles me about this all the way around, because if this is a concern, if this is, right. a, if, if this is something where a person 
person's unfit for office and uh, somehow spinning stories and the person's maybe off their rocker. And I'm just I'm mm-hmm. not saying that, but yeah, it's, it's, it sounds like one way or the other, something uh, should have been done to address this some time ago because this has been brewing for quite some time. Well, we've actually, t- we've they got talked a- about they did talk about it some time ago. We're going to take a very quick break. If you can stay with us here on News Talk 1110 WBT, it's 550. WBT, time saver traffic and weather together, brought to you by Matthews Fund Machines, have report of two separate incidents on I-77 southbound between Lake Norman exit 33 and Davidson exit 30. Very heavy traffic, 77 southbound, beginning at Mooresville, exit 36. You may want to consider NC Highway 115 as your alternate. Have a collision to the north on Highland Creek Parkway near Eastfield Road, to the south on Sharon Lane near Providence Road, South Boulevard near Woodlawn, Beam Road near Shopton Road. It's bow time at Bojangles. Hurry in to get a Bojangles pork chop biscuit, a tender, perfectly seasoned grilled pork chop on a made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuit. Now at Bojangles, it's bow time. 63 degrees tonight, clear with a low 34. Tomorrow, sunny with a high 63. Boomer Von Cannon, WBT, time saver traffic and weather together every 10 minutes. Next update at 6 o'clock. Now back to Vince Coakley. And our conversation with Darlene Luther in Indian Trail uh, city councilwoman, and uh, I wanted to continue our conversation here in the final minutes we have in the show. Um, and here's my question for you: If this is something that's been going on for as long as it has, uh, and if you're describing a situation where there's um, scenarios which are not true and conspiracy theories which are not true. You're, you're painting a picture of someone potentially unfit for office. Why has nothing been done about this before now? Well, what I think is for a long time it would have been a four-to-one vote. John Hollinger, who's no longer here, he left and moved out of state, was always the one that would not go so far as to say there's something seriously wrong with this person. He was the one that would not do that. Maybe he just didn't believe that that, that, that was the case. I don't know. But, um, I wasn't on the, on the original council. And then since then, um, since he has left, it's just the attitude has been because I would have in, in a second. I just feel like it's bad for Indian Trail. You ruin a lot of people's reputations, a lot of people's character are along the way. And like I said, this isn't just me. This isn't just an it's an accusation probably against 20 different people consistently. And I would have done something. But at that point, you had a couple of council people that just were so used to dealing with them that they even stopped emailing back, stopped um, communicating him with whatsoever because every time you do it opens up a larger can of worms and then he runs back to the media and has a bigger story and it's almost like every time you even want to go and address anything you you know that it's get it's going to get bigger and bigger and nobody has the energy that this guy has to continue in that direction and not only that but it becomes a, it becomes such an embarrassment for the town that it's easier just to not now say for example we brought up oh you know john quinn is a narcissist he's got issues whatever you want to call him that would be a story in and of itself once again but this thing just to get back to quickly um about this uh peeper are you still there Yes, still here. Okay. I got about okay. 30 seconds, though. So. Okay. Um, this this people in, uh, incident was completely legal meeting. Do not let them say it was an illegal meeting. It's illegal if town business was discussed. We stopped in to see how the campaign was going. We openly support them, asked them, how are you doing with your flyers? Do you have enough volunteers? What neighborhoods are being covered? So on and so forth. School of Government, the unbiased authority, says meeting for a campaign is legal. Now, you have Falkenberry, who's one of Quinn's cohorts. By the way, these people all believe in the website APFN.org. Everybody check out APFN.org. It's a conspira- government conspiracy website. And they actually have gotten up, it's on public record, and told the council to familiarize themselves with APFN.org. They yeah. think Timothy McVeigh was really a government official. Well, uh, we, we can't go down that road here, but uh, I appreciate you calling in Darlene Luther and Indian Trail. A meeting coming up tonight, 7 o'clock. We'll keep you posted on this drama. Vince Coakley saying, have a good evening. God bless you.